Hi students, this is Mrs. Wendt, and this short presentation is to go over the vocab words that are in Chapter 4, Section 1 of your biology book. Okay, and you should be putting this in your notebook just like you were writing notes in class. So take a second, pause the video if you need to, and get your notebook out. Okay, you may find that you know a lot of these words already. Um, but we want to make sure everybody knows them because everybody kind of comes from a different background. Okay. And these words are all going to have to do with how living organisms get their energy. Okay. So the first word we have here is called autotroph. And the prefix auto here, auto means self. Like an automobile, you can drive yourself. Or if you have an automatic dishwasher, it will automatically do the dishes. You don't have to stand there and do them. Okay. And then troph means food. So autotroph means self food. And this is an organism that can make its own food from sunlight or chemicals. Okay. And so we kind of got two little groups that go with that, the sunlight group and the chemical group. Now, these autotrophs have another name called producers. So the word autotroph and producer are synonyms. That means they mean the same thing. And you should know both words, and you can use them interchangeably. That means if you have like a quiz question, and you're not sure if the answer is autotroph or producer, they're both good. They mean the same thing. Okay, So an autotroph is an organism that can make its own food from sunlight or chemicals. This is also called a producer. Okay, now photosynthesis is how you make food from sunlight energy. And plants do this. So photosynthesis, photo means light, and synthesize or synthesis means building something. So you're using light to build something. And the thing you are actually building is a molecule of sugar. And we're going to learn a lot more about photosynthesis in a couple weeks. Okay? So some animals can make their own food from sunlight. Now we also have some creatures. Wait, let me back up. I think I said some animals make their own food from sunlight. That is not true. It is plants. Okay? So that's just Miss Went being silly. So plants make food from sunlight, and there are some bacteria, not all bacteria, but some bacteria that can make food from chemicals. So that means if there's some bacteria maybe sealed up, um, stuck inside some dirt, the bacteria can actually take the chemicals out of the dirt and use it to build their food and then get their energy out of it. So that's a pretty cool skill too. So that's chemosynthesis. Chemo would be chemical. And then again, synthesis is building. So chemical building. Okay. So we got four vocab words there that we want you familiar with. Autotroph, producer, photosynthesis, chemosynthesis. Okay. Now the next group, the opposite of an autotroph is a heterotroph. Hetero, this prefix means different. So these are organisms that have to eat something different for energy. They cannot make it themselves. Okay, so heterotrophs, organisms that, not yeast, oh my goodness, eat <laughs> food for energy. Sorry about that, guys. And these guys also have another name. They are called consumers. So they can, you can't make your own food, you just consume it. So you can see autotroph and heterotroph are opposite words. Producer and consumer are opposite words. And just like above, a heterotroph and consumer mean the same thing. Doesn't matter which one you choose to use. Now if you find you're falling behind on writing, you can always pause the video. But for those of you that are fast writers, I'm going to keep going here. We have some different types of consumers. 
And these are words I think you're probably familiar with. So you maybe don't have to write down all the details or examples. That's kind of up to you and how you want to do your notes. But the first type of consumer is a carnivore. And that's an animal that eats meat. So lions and owls and sharks are going to hunt and eat other animals. And because they tend to hunt, we have a couple words for that too. A predator is a hunter. So lions, owls, sharks, these guys are all predators because they go hunting for food. The prey is the animals they are hunting. Okay, so I got a couple examples here. So a predator would be a, z a tiger. Tigers would be the hunters and their prey would be a zebra. Another example of spider is a hunter and spiders are hunting for flies. So flies would be the prey. Okay, so predators and prey. The predator is a carnivore. Now the prey can be a lot of different things. It depends on what the prey eats. Okay, so I can't give you a hard rule as to what prey is, but predators are always going to be carnivores. Okay, so we have some animals that eat meat. We also have some animals that eat just plants. It could be the leaves of the plant, it could be the seeds, like sunflower seeds or acorns or other kinds of nuts. Uh, it could be the fruit, maybe some berries, corn, um, well corn would be a seed of course, but um, any part of the plant at all. Some animals are deep in the soil eating on roots of things, and herbivores would include cows and rabbits, pretty common things we have around here in Nobles County. The next one we have here is scavengers. And scavengers are creatures that eat meat from animals that have already been killed by someone else. So they're not predators, they don't have hunting skills. But they'll just hang out and look for opportunities to finish eating an animal that somebody else killed, okay? So if, I often see this when I'm driving on the highway, that somebody hits a skunk or a squirrel and you'll see a bird eating it. That would be the bird being the scavenger, picking at that dead animal. The bird didn't kill it, but he's like, eh, free meal, and he's eating it. Okay, so there's a lot of, especially birds that are scavengers, but there's other smaller creatures too, bugs and worms and things like that, that would fall in this category as well. And then the last one we have is omnivore. And omnivores eat a mixed bag of things. They eat plants and meat. So humans are omnivores. Bears are omnivores. Lots of creatures are omnivores. Um, now if we had all the time in the world, I would love to show you some skulls of some of these animals. And you notice that they have different kinds of teeth based on what they eat. So carnivores have sharp, pointy teeth because they're predators, and you need sharp, pointy teeth to pull and cut into meat. Okay, so if you eat a steak, you probably need a knife to help cut it apart. Um, you might kind of shred it with your teeth as you're eating it. Herbivores, um, if they have teeth, they're generally flat, um, so they can either like chop into a leaf with a clean cut, or they might have um, long flat teeth like you have in the back of your mouth for grinding food, for grinding seeds and things. Um, so you're gonna see lots of different types of teeth. And bird beaks also have lots of different shapes. Uh, chickens are herbivores. They have a bird beak that's pointy to pick up and crush seeds. An eagle is gonna have a beak that has a kind of a point on the end to rip into meat. So if you take a look at a bird's beak, sometimes you can figure out what he eats just by the shape of the beak or looking at an animal's teeth. Lots of sharp pointed teeth, he's probably a meat eater. More flat teeth, he probably grinds or chops up vegetables or plants, okay? So with this list of vocab here, um, there will be a Quizlet link so you can kind of practice the words and, and really get comfortable with them because we use them a lot to describe things. 
Um, so you may see on a test or quiz something like this, um, where there's just a bunch of pictures and stuff, and you maybe have to try to figure out what some things are, okay? Um, and unfortunately, my pen is not working right now, otherwise I'd love to write on all the pictures for you. Um, but let me explain a couple of them here. This one picture in the corner, um, these little pink things are actually E. coli bacteria, a very common form of bacteria. And bacteria tend to be decomposers, okay? So these guys actually live in your intestines. So this yellow stuff is your intestines. And the food that you eat that your body doesn't need is solid waste in your intestines. And these bacteria help break it down so you can go to the bathroom and poop and get rid of it. So these guys actually help us out quite a bit. Uh, this koala here, I would call an herbivore. He only eats eucalyptus leaves. And they're endangered because of that, because they only have one real food source. So like when there's a bunch of wildfires in Australia, like we saw this past year, um, a lot of those trees that they use for food have been destroyed. So these guys are, are kind of critically endangered right now because they've lost their food source. Uh, down here we have a tarantula, which is a kind of spider. Spiders eat other bugs and insects, so he is a predator and a carnivore. He's a hunter and he eats meat. Uh, right here, this is a fern plant, and this little piece right here that's curling around, you can see the other little baby pieces. Um, this is a fiddler fern, or fiddletail fern, something like that. Um, but he's got green leaves. This is going to be a producer, or an autotroph, making its own food. Uh, the frog down here is a heterotroph. He has to eat food, and frogs tend to eat mostly insects, so he's probably a carnivore. If we were able to dissect frogs, you'd see that his teeth are set up for hunting, not for chewing plants. Um, this here, these mushrooms, um, are actually decomposers. And I don't know, we didn't have that word yet, but it's coming. Um, but decomposers are going to be guys who break down dead things and turn it back into soil. Okay, um, so there's a lot of pictures here. Um, so if I give you a picture, could you give me a word or two to describe them or be able to tell me this is what they eat or they hunt or they whatever they do? That's what we want you to do, to feel comfortable enough with these words that you can use them to label pictures. Okay, so please take some time, go to Schoology, use that Quizlet link to practice these words. And when you're ready, you can listen to the next section of notes. Have a great day, guys.